Good morning, everyone. There we go. That works. This isn't... Yes, it is working now. Welcome to Edinburgh. Welcome to Repository Fringe 2011. And on behalf of the university, uh, our Vice Principal, Jeff Haywood. Thanks, Martin. Um, just really a few minutes of your time, and I was peering out of the window there, I think I've been watching over the last day or two, because there's nothing better than welcoming people to a conference when it's not raining. And yesterday, of course, was abysmal day, and I thought, uh, nice sunshine this morning, it, it is dry. So, so welcome to Edinburgh. Uh, welcome to the city and, and, and also, of course, to the university and to the, and to inf the informatics building that we're hosting the um, repositories fringe in. I, 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 spend, I spend quite a lot of my time drifting around the edges of the repositories and the data uh, movements around the UK and, and internationally, and, and, and I get a sense that this is becoming a really a quite exciting but also a very influential time. Within, within higher education in general in terms of the design and the implementation of, of repositories that hold research publications and that hold data. And of course, publications evolve from the data that, um, that academics and researchers have, have gathered um, and have, in their varying ways have stored and translated into, into publications and those publications have found their way into the public domain either in the normal process of, of commercial academic publishing, and of course that's got big question marks around it, but also in the grey area in which academics, and, and I've been in this, in this area for several decades, have traded in an open way their publications at various stages. And so we're almost, to my mind, going back to a point when the academic community was smaller, at which, which, which we used to openly trade within subject domains. But, of course, they only happened between those people who knew each other and had a trust relationship with each other. And I think that the step up now to much more openness, openness to everyone, whether they're your known friends or not, around your publications and around the data that underpins it, is actually part of a general movement of, of open everything, which is going to really challenge us, I think, in terms of short, medium, and long-term models of sustainability as to, how to, um, as to how to manage that openness at, at a sensible price and, and ensuring that, that, that the impact was actually worth the effort. It's interesting to see also that the number of events which are targeted at senior managers, vice principals, vice chancellors, etc., within institutions, those responsible for research management, that the number of events of that kind has actually risen. There's one, for instance, in London in September organized by JISC, targeted specifically at those staff who will make the policy decisions about how a university will act. And if we look around the UK, we see instances of open university X, I won't na name any names, um, coming through as institutions make a conscious decision that they will actually make their work, their outputs available. Um, and I think that this is a really good sign. It's a good sign in the sense that, that there is a recognition that the open agenda is important and that, and that we will engage with it. Um, and also that some hard thinking when, will then go on about how you actually finance and, and support that in the longer term. I think an interesting other sign of action is that we're actually seeing some some um, hybrid posts appearing of a novel kind which bring together traditional IT, traditional library, traditional research um, act areas and activities into single posts um, to try to lead and manage uh, as they go forward. I think it would be good if we had a strong uh, human and physical network across the UK of those who, who have concern for institutional land and, and funding agency uh, repositories. I, I know that JISC's doing some work on this, and so I'm hopeful that something will come out in, in terms of a, of a network of, of, of repositories and repository um, um, keepers um, across the UK. Within Edinburgh, we've spent some time thinking about this. We've done, we've done quite a lot of work around research data management and our research data storage. And it was interesting for us that, that the data storage was important as the, as, as the data repository and then the linkage onto the publications repository so that that, from an academic point of view, was seen as one, as one whole thing. We have defined what the university responsibilities are with respect to, to its role in supporting researchers and what the roles and responsibilities are of, of PIs and of individual researchers. The trick now for us will be how we ch turn that into reality in terms of training 
i.e. the support side, the carrot side, and also compliance, the stick side, um, to ensure that, 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 that what we would like to see happen with respect to re the research process does actually take place. We don't expect it to be cheap, and we don't expect it to be easy, and, and as I said, um, we, we have to find ways of ensuring that, that, that we can take that sensibly forward. We know that, that, that several universities around the UK are interested in that um, because we um, plagiarise from each other and talk to each other and indeed to some degree perhaps compete a little around this area. Um, some of my colleagues here, um, Sheila Cannell and, and Robin Rice and, and Kevin Ashley, uh, could talk more about that to you if you want to, if you want to know about it. Um, finally, sort of looking forward into the, in, in, into the, the next year, um, for those of you who are avid conference goers, I note that there are two um, uh, significant events coming up that, that, that will be of interest. One of them is that the Open Repositories 2012, the, the seventh international conference on open repositories, is coming to Edinburgh next July, um, so 9th to the 13th of July. And of course, the annual um, International Data Curation Conference, which DCC organizes, um, will take place in Bristol in, in early December 5th to the 7th. So finally, um, thank you for, um, for inviting me to, to open your, your conference. Um, I'd like to wish you well. Um, I hope that um, your discussions and your debates are fruitful and that despite all the hard work that you will inevitably do over long hours over the next day or so, that you find time to go out and enjoy some of the city and the fringe um, I can't vouch for the quality of the burgers or the hot dogs in the various stands, um, but I'm sure that you will find things around which, which will be of interest and, and, and amusement to you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> Good morning. Um, before I uh, introduce our um, open keynote, um, Eloy Rodriguez, um, there's a few housekeeping issues to go through. Um, for those of you involved in the hackathon, on the fourth floor, um, Mini Forum 2, um, that's where it will be taking place, um, and there's a lift out there in the atrium. Um, and all other activities will be taking place in here. This is Geo 7 and Geo 7A, and sort of di diagonally across is Geo 3, where they um, roundtable sessions will be taking place. In the unlikely event there's going to be a fire, uh, fire alarm, if we make our way out to the right through the, the main entrance and sort of assemble on the other side of the street, um, <clears throat> and the toilets, as far as I know, are out to the left and on the, the left. Ladies in the other direction. Across in that, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, coffee's going to be um, 22... Um, 11, and lunch will be 12.30, followed by the roundtable discussions, as I say, in these three different spaces. One, two in here and one over in Geo 3. All of the presentations are being recorded, um, so if anyone has any issues with that, please speak to myself or one of the organisers um, at the coffee break. Um, and we'll be hoping to put the, um, the videos on the Repository Friends website post-event. There should be some Um, there will be sort of roving mics um, for um, the Q&A um, after each presentation. Um, and if we could ask, if we could maybe indicate name and affiliation, that would be great. And um, Nicola uh, Osborne um, will be um, live blogging um, and amplifying the event through a, a series of um, social media channels. The Twitter hashtags um, are Fringe11, for those of you who want to follow on Flip. Uh, Twitter, and we actually have a, a social ha hashtag for those who want to share um, if you've been to a show, you want to sort of recommend it, or you want to meet up for dinner or whatever, and that's uh, RF11, social. And then um, we also have a, a Flickr group, so those of you who want to take photographs of the event, if you go onto our website, you'll, you'll see a, a link to uh, Repository Friends 2011 Flickr group. So we hope to populate that with... Um, as many photographs as possible. <clears throat> 